left. You are going to use this one in order to get the confidence interval for the variance or standard deviation and do one problem on the test hypothesis, one or two, or the, okay, variance. So three problems would be related to this table, okay? So make sure your tools are available. Now, the final review. The first topics that we are going to be interested in from the past is the box plot. And this is the problem that we did it before. So I quickly remind you, so that you know, this is the only one that we get from the, from the first part. Okay, so it's going to be final, final review. Okay, the problem one is going to be the first topic that we have. The topic is box plot. You know that the set of numbers will be given to you. I'm going to find uh, five summary numbers. You can find it quickly with your calculator, or otherwise you have to order the set to get these numbers, okay? So I'm going to show you order the data set that we have. And we have uh, 18 numbers. So from the smaller one to the bigger one, this is what you're going to have. We have the four eights. Okay, then we have uh, 216, 216, and we have 24 here, 24, 240, and you have 248, and we have the 56, 64, uh, we have 464. 464, 72, and 72, and 88. Okay, that's it. The number of observation 18 divided by 2, that given 9. So we find the Q2 first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And that would be 1, 2, 3. That's going to be 9. So there is nothing in between. So the Q2 would be the average. 4D plus 48 divided by two, that give you 44. Then you go to the portion to the right and the left to find the Q1 and the Q3. We have nine numbers divided by two, that give you 4.5. So that's going to be one, two, three, four. And that's one, two, three, four. So the leftover is 16, which is Q1. Do the same thing here. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. The leftover is going to be your Q3, which is 60, 64. That's it. The minimum is 8. And the maximum is 88. So that's the five summary numbers that we have to find first. Or you can drop it into your calculator. Just go that variable part. And they give you these five numbers right away. Any question? So you put them on the number line and you make a box. So this is it. The last number is 88. So I divide it into the tens. So it's going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. Okay, the last time you know it's going to be 100, but we don't need it. Okay, bring these numbers down here uh, to get the box. So the minimum is 8. Suppose this is 8. So you put a line here. Q1 of 16. So this is 16. Line here. Q2 of 44. This is 44, line here. Q3 at 64, 64. The maximum of 88, 88. So these are the boxes, you connect them together. Okay, this is it. And you connect to the max and the mean. Okay, so these are going to be Q1, 
Q2 and Q3. So that's a box plot. We have to describe it. You get the actual middle of the box, the midpoint. This is the midpoint of the box. Yours is shifted to the right. So this distribution is skewed. Okay, skewed to the right. When it's a right, it's skewed positively. Okay, or negatively, sorry. Okay, so we have to make a comment. The comment is that the distribution, you can say that it's skewed to the right or is going to be negatively, okay, negatively skewed. And you're done. You don't need for, you know, IQR, you don't need for the alt layers, nothing. Just give us the box and we are going to be happy. Okay, when you try, just make sure I identify Q1. So you have to identify these five numbers first, okay? Five numbers first, and then you get your graph and you're done. You know that it depends where your Q2 is going to be, to the right of the actual midpoint or to the left or very close. If it's going to be very close, it's symmetric. This is skewed to the right, which is skewed negatively. And if it's going to be the other way around, it's going to be skewed positively. And then you're done. Okay, a straightforward question. Any question? That's question number one or topic number one that you're going to be interested in. And the reason I told you that, this is the kind of graph that in future you're going to use. So that's why we want to remind you. So that is topic number one. Question? Topic number two. Normal distribution. Very easy question. Normal distribution. A normal situation will be described, and you may be asked to find the probability of at least, at most, or in between. So you are going to <coughs> symbolically write your probability question. You find the Z score from the calculator or the table you find the corresponding area to the to the Z number, and that would be your probability. Okay, so you can't miss it. And we have a question number two here. It's a normal distribution case with the, okay, when it's a normal, they give you the population mean, the mean of 5.1, okay, and the standard deviation population, the standard deviation of 0.9. You identify these two, and then the question of the probability. Okay, it's about, uh, what's that, Native American uh, pot. Okay, and uh, it's gonna be known that the thickness of the one that they use is in milli, millimeter. And they asked, you know, when to pick one of them out, and they asked the following question. What is the fact that the probability that that thickness is going to be at most three milliliter. At most is the end. Make sure to use the correct direction. Okay, at most means x is less than equal to three. That's the first part. The second part, at least, is the beginning. Beginning is seven millimeter. Okay, that's A and the B, and the part C in between. So. This is the probability that you have to find. You know that for each case, you can do it with calculator right away, we don't mind. You write this and then the calculator result, we accept it right away in the normal distribution case. Or otherwise you have to change it to the Z and the Z table. Okay, so we take this one first. We find the Z. So the Z is going to be Z is X minus mu over sigma. Okay, we substitute. So your X is three and the mu of 5.1, the sigma of 0.9. You find it with two decimal places. So that gives you negative 2.83. So you arrive at the probability that Z to be less than negative 2.83 want to go with the table, this is the area to the left. 
So that's it. The number is negative 2.33. And you check your table. The probability corresponds to this one is going to be 0 0.0099. You can check it for yourself, which is 0.99%. Okay, so the chance that the thickness is going to be less than 3 millimeter, it's going to be almost 1%. So that gives you a 0.99%. And we are done with the first part. Any question? It's a straightforward. Again, you can use your calculator for this one. You can ask the numbers right away. Okay, that's the first part, part one. Part two, the same thing. You have to find the Z. Okay, Z score. So P of X greater than or equal to the seven. Then the Z number is going to be X seven minus 5.1 divided by 0.9, okay? So the top is going to be 1.9, and this is going to be 0.9 here. Okay, I don't have the number for this one, I have to check here. So I have a 1.9 divided by 0.9. It's going to be 2.211, uh, two decimal places, okay? So it's going to be 2.11. So it's a probability, so we arrive at the Z to B, okay? So it's going to be two point, I write it down for myself. Okay, so it's going to be probability that the Z is going to be greater than or greater than equal to, doesn't matter, 2.11. It's the area to the right. You have to find the complement. Okay, so it's going to be 2.11. This is the one. So you have to find it if you want to use your table. So it's going to be one minus. The Z numbers correspond to the 2.211. Uh, Go to the Z table and you find it. It's a point. Okay, it's a point 0.98. Okay, 9826. Okay, from the from the C table, 2.1, 2 2.0, And you subtract that, that gives you the probability in question. Okay, so that gives you 4, 7, 1, and 0. Okay, 0 0.0174. And if you want to change it to the percent, it's going to be 1.74%. So the chance that the, the thickness is going to be bigger than seven millimeter is going to be 1.74%. And that would be the second part. Okay, any question? The last part going to be in between, we just uh, find this uh, probability you subtracted. I'm going to do it here. So we may give all the three parts or just uh, one part. So the last part is probability that X is going to be between, okay, three and seven. You already got the Z numbers. Okay, so the Z number for the three was negative 2.33, less than X. And the seven was uh, 2.11. Okay, it's the area between the curves. It's a negative 2.33, and this is going to be 2.11. Again, you can use calculator to get these numbers right away. So we have the corresponding numbers we subtracted. Uh, 2.11 is 0.9826, and the other one is 0.0099. You subtract it, and you're done. So that would be 7, 10. Okay, seven nine. I think that's what ninety seven point twenty seven percent. So that gives you the probability in, in question. Okay, if you need more uh, to practice, you go to your test number three and you have a normal distribution. Okay, so that's question number two or the topics number two. Straightforward. 
just you know calculator be accepted if you design the problem not just give me three numbers what are you talking about those three numbers then we accept that okay any question so that is a normal distribution and the problem related to that the next one is the tricky one the one that most of you missed it let me discuss it on the test so make sure you're not going to miss it this time number three uh, the number three is normal approximation okay a normal approximation now this is going to be a situation that a binomial distribution would be given to you then you want to approximate it by the okay by the normal it takes a little bit more time because there are a couple of conditions that you have to check okay there is uh, going to be three steps okay to, to do it and be quick i'm going to post this one later you can check it again what you want this one okay so uh, the case for the for the normal distribution uh, a binomial case would be given to you you read it carefully in this case uh, the, the case is that uh, we did this one before you could record off your payment some people are going to be late so we have a situation over here that we check so the possibility that some payment would be late is going to be probability of success if you like the p is 29 percent okay which is 0.29 and we have a sample of 50 people and we want to find the probability that the first part probability that since it's a binomial distribution you have to go with the r at least we get 20 people that's part one and the part two we are going to get that the number of the people to be between 20 and 25. you see because the sample size is bigger than 20 you cannot use the table but of course you know some calculator can do it but you have to use the normal approximation to get this one okay for the normal approximation it's a three steps Step one, checking. You have to check two conditions. N times P must be bigger than five and N times Q bigger than five. So the information that we have is uh, you have the P. P is equal to the 0.29. You have to find the Q, which is one minus 0.29. Okay, and this is going to be 0.71 and the sample size of 50. So the first thing that you have to do, the condition, you have to find n times p, which is going to be 50 times 0.29. Okay, carefully find this number is a 14.5. It must be bigger than five, which is the case. That's the first condition. The second condition is n times q which is going to be 50 times 0.71. Okay, this number is 35.5. It's bigger than five, so the condition is satisfied. So you claim that the normal approximation, normal approximation can be applied. You have to check this condition. Can be, can be applied. Now we go to the normal case can be applied means you have to find the mu okay mu which is n times p we already got this number is 14.5 you have to find the sigma sigma is the square root of npq so we are going to find it n is 50 p is 0.29 and q is 0.71 Carefully use your calculator to get this number, which is 3.21. So the sigma is going to be 3.29. So from now on, you are in a normal mode because you have the mean and you have the sigma. Now you bring the question. So what's the question? Part one, 
the question is probability that R to be less than equal to 20. Remember in case of the binomial, this means 20, 19, 18, 17, etc. So you have to correct for continuity. This is what you missed on the test. Okay, correction for continuity means uh, we have to drop the 20 in an interval. The interval that we can go is this one. This is 20. You can go uh, 0.5 up, so that give you 20.5, or you can go 0.5 down, which is 19.5. Then you want this to be less than. 20 is less than what? You see 20 is less than 20.5. If it was greater than 20 would be greater than 19.5. So you compare this number with the 0.5 up, 0.5 down. Since it's less, so this means probability that we use the X is going to be less than or less than equal to. Less than what? Less than 20.5. So you have to work with this one rather than the original one. Most of you didn't correct for continuity on the test number three that we did this one. Any question? So the direction must be constant. You must cover 20. You see when you go from less than 20.5, so you cover 20. Okay, it's got, it was greater than, you pick the other number to be consistent. Okay, any question? Now from now on, Z table, Z numbers, you're done. So uh, we go with the Z, Z equal to the X minus mu over sigma. So the X is, again, you can use your calculator at this time. So that gives you 14.5 divided by the Sigma, which is 3.21. Okay. So we get uh, this number to get the, to get the result. Let's see what I have over here. Oh, I, unfortunately, I made a mistake here. This is, this is greater than in the, yes, it's greater than. The one that I did last semester was less than. Okay, I have to switch it, sorry. This is, this is good for the two, less than, okay, that you don't have it. You may see it on the test, but if this is going to be greater than, you have to get the other one. So I just uh, get this one out, but I leave it for you. So in case they switch it, so you know what to do, but, in your case, is greater than or equal to 20. Sorry about that. If it's greater than, we do it the other way around. You see, 20 is greater than 19.5 this time. 19.5. So it's going to be x greater than 19.5. Okay, any question? So the direction must be consistent. You see, it's greater than, so we picked the 19.5. It was less than we put to 20.5 and we have it in the second part. Okay, so I have to find the Z number for this one, sorry about that. So the Z is equal to 19.5 minus 14.5 divided by 321. Okay, so that would give you 1.56. So now the question is going to be probability that the Z is greater than 1.56. Again, it can be done by calculator, we don't mind. But uh, if you want to continue, this is going to be the case. This is the Z, 1.56 is greater than, make sure you get the complement. So from the table, it's going to be one minus, 1.56 is, okay, 1.56 is going to be point nine. Okay, 9406, and if you subtract it, that gives you point zero five nine four, which is 5.94%. So the probability that at least 20 of those payments are going to be late is going to be 5.94%. That's going to be first part. Okay, make sure check the conditions and then correct for continuity before we go on to get these numbers. Okay, 
So uh, that's it. That's going to be the first part. Any question? So uh, we usually give you one part, okay? But uh, we just give you two over here so that we get uh, to know when it will happen. How we're going to correct for continuity when it's between two numbers. Any question? So the second part, R is going to be between 20 and 25. So we just do the correction for continuity for that part. And then we do it. So the part B, you want to find the probability that the payments, late payments are going to be between 20 and uh, 25. Again, you have to correct for continuity. This is how we're going to do it. CC. So it's going to be probability of, you see X, less than 25, less than 0.5 up, 0.5 down. 25, of course, going to be less than 25.5. Over here, greater than 20, greater than what? 0.5 up, 0.5 down. 20 is going to be greater than 19.5. You see, this is how we're going to do it. Any question? So you have to correct for continuity. You have to drop it into the one, the okay, one, one interval to be able to do it. Now, again, the Z score. We already got the ZS score for this side. We can find the ZS score for the other side too. So this is going to be a situation I'm going to have. So I have the, I call this one, uh, I have the X1 19.5. So I already got this number. Okay, it's 1.56. So get the other one, X2 equal to the 25.5 and find the Z2 which is 25.5 minus 14.5 uh, and divided by 3.21, was it? Okay, so 321. And if you get this, in, this C number, that would be 3.43. Okay, so now the question is going to be that probability of uh, the Z, 1.56, less than Z, less than 3.43. Again, calculate or, or the, the table. If you want to use the table, you have uh, 1.56 and 3.43 in between. The number for 156, we already got this one, it's a point Okay, it's a point nine. Just number nine four. Yes, four or six. This number is going to be out of the table. You just pick the last one. We don't pick not one. It's uh, almost one, which is point nine 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 seven. Okay, you subtract it, and you get the probability in question. So the probability that the payment, late payment, is going to be between 20 and 25 is going to be a difference between these two. 0 0.9406, which is going to be 0 0.0591. So 5.91%. So there is a almost 6% chance. 6% chance that the late payments are going to be between, okay, 20 and 20, 25. So that would be the question we know in this case. Yes, I did use the Z-score table for all of them. Yeah, these are the numbers that you find from the Z-score. You see, this is the Z. You see, for example, the one that I talk about, this is 3.4. 3.4301230.997. That's the point. You see, point 0.997. Yeah, you need that table or, or, or calculator to get these numbers. You need to see a score for most of the problem on your on the, on the test. Okay, any question? So get back to your test three. Some of you missed this question. Okay, make sure you don't miss it. We give you one. 
uh, and make sure to get all the condition checking okay correction for continuity and getting the final answer okay that was question number three or the topics number three we're going to the four number four is p of x bar remember this is a distribution that's a distribution distribution of sample means very easy question the situation is that uh, we usually talk about the normal distribution so we are going to be p of x usually pick one person out we ask the question of the probability but in this case we have a group of people when we have a group of people so the size n is not one okay so it's going to be two cases you see the cases that we have for this problem is they usually give you the size one and they ask a question regarding p of x so you have to use the z formula which is x minus p over sigma and find the probability then they give you a size okay then they give you a size here size n would be given to you okay this number is given so it's going to be number other than one then they ask the same question but when you are in a group you talk about the average of the group not one person so you must make sure and use the z formula as x bar minus mu over sigma over radical n so that's a type of problems that we have so the first part the sample is one so you're talking about yourself in the second part you are going to be in a group of people so we talk about your you know we talk about average salary of the group this is salary of you okay salary of you but this is going to be the case so very straightforward problem in this problem they are talking about the the men's weight i think yeah that's it so we have the, the situation is going to be normal the information to be given to the main weight average is for all the population is 172 pounds and the standard deviation of 29 pounds so in the first part we pick one person out one man and we want to know what is the chance that his weight is going to be less than 167 that's the first part okay that's it this is your c formula you substitute and get the probability right away okay so we go with the z which is x minus mu over sigma and you substitute that give 167 172 over 29 Okay, this C number is going to be negative 0.17. Okay, so the question is going to be probability that Z to be less than negative 0.17. Again, table or calculator. So this is it. It's a negative 0.17 and it's the area to the left. Exactly the Z number from the table. So the number from the table is, uh, it's going to be 0.4325. Okay, so in percent, 43.25%. So the chance that, the, okay, the chance that a man will have a weight less than 167 is 43%. That's the first part. Okay, the first part is just a normal distribution question. Okay, any question? Now, the second part, we go in the group. The second part, the sample size is given to you. Okay, we pick a sample of okay, men. Sample of 36 men. So in the second part, we have the n equal to the 36. And we want to know in this case, when, what's the average weight of the group? What is the chance that the average weight? So we have to use the x bar for the second part. Okay, what is the average weight of the group to be, what's the chance to be less than 167? That's it. So your z formula would be different. The top is the same, but the bottom is sigma over radical. Remember the, 
the mean of the x bar is the same as the mean of the x, but the sigma is different. So substitute. So the top we get 167 minus 172. And your sigma was 29, but the sample of 36. Okay, you simplify this one. Because the top that give you a negative four, the bottom one give you 4.8. And the result is going to be negative 1.04. So that would be your Z number. Okay, Z of negative 1.04. So you have to find the probability that the z is going to be greater than negative 1.04. Z table or calculator. So that gives you negative 1.04. But remember this is going to be, okay, sorry, this is less than. Less than the same direction, P of z less than negative 1.04. So it's the area to the left again. It's like the first part. And if you go to the Z uh, and find the probability here, it's going to be 0 0.1515, which is 15.15%. So the probability that the average weight of the group going to be less than 167 pounds is going to be 15.15%. .15 and then you that. Okay, it's a straightforward problem. You can't miss it to get this uh, this number. Okay, so that would uh, take us out of the, the distribution that we have. This four question for a standard question that we're going to have. Again, need practice. Just go back see your test three. You have the similar one on that test. Okay, check them. And you have the practice test again if you need more. Right? This number four. Any question? Now that will take us to the, the other topics, confidence interval, easy section really. We have the confidence interval for the mean, two cases, confidence interval for the proportion, and confidence interval for the standard deviation. So at least four or five questions on the confidence interval. So make sure your formulas are ready and that would be a straightforward problem. So it's a start with the number number five. So it's a confidence. Okay, confidence interval. It's going to be confidence interval for the mu, for the mean, for the population mean. Mu when sigma is known, is given to you. In sigma is going to be known, your marginal error formula is this one, E equal to the ZC, sigma over radical N. That's your marginal error. And your interval is, mu is going to be between X bar plus E and the X bar minus E. That's all the tools that you need to do this problem. So a situation is created, number five, uh, about the salary of a statistics professor. We did this one before on your quiz. Uh, okay, the test three, but I'm going to do it. Okay, so uh, this is going to be the confidence for the mean. So the question is about the mean. So you bring the sample information, sample data. They check the salary of 100 professors. So N equal to the 100. They find out the mean salary is $95,000. Okay, and the population standard deviation sigma is given to you is $12,345. Okay, and you want to find the confidence level, confidence interval with the confidence level of the 95%. In the case of confidence interval, we go with the C. Okay, that's it. So you know the formula. So you have to find the ZC and the ZC, we need that table. Okay, it's a kind of a Z table that I gave you, but this bottom corner here. 
So these are gonna be the confidence level, and these are the confidence critical values. Okay, in this case, we have a 95%, 95% that give 1.96. That's the most you are going to do for us in this case. Okay, so as, uh, this is it. So we have the C of 95%, which is 0.95, and the corresponding number ZC is 1.96. So substitute here. So E is equal to the CC, sigma over radical N. We substitute. So the CC is 1.96 times the sigma, 12,345 over the radical N, radical 100, square root of 100, which is 10. You can easily simplify it. So if you simplify it, you get uh, 2,419.62. That would be your E number. And use the formula to get the interval. So that's it. Mu e is going to be between X bar plus E and the X bar minus E. Substitute, you have a $95,000. Okay, minus 2,419.62. And you repeat it again. 95,000 plus 2,419.62. And this is going to be in dollars. Okay, I just uh, run that. So the final answer is 97,420. And this is going to be 92,000. We did a very similar one about the price of house prices on the test three. Okay, that's it. But you have to make a comment. Comment is that uh, the confidence level of 95%, so you are 95% sure that the population, the salary of all the statistics teachers are going to be in this range. Okay, so this is the common usual practice or sentence. There is a, you have to make a comment, remember, all these problems need, need a comment, otherwise you lose points for each one of them. There's a 95% chance that the population, okay, the population mean, salary of those teachers, let's say mean, is going to be between in between ninety two thousand five eighty and ninety seven thousand four twenty and then you done okay again straightforward problem you can't miss it to get this uh, this number Okay, so this is uh, the case when the sigma sigma is known. For number five, number six is the same category, and you can check your practice uh, test number three that we did to see the solution. Okay, so number six, so we're going to check a uh, solution. We did it. Practice test number three, and this is uh, problem five. It's the same category about the English teachers. It's the same category because the sigma is, is not. Okay, so that would be case one. Any question? The case two for the confidence interval for the bean is when the, okay, when the sigma is going to be unknown. So that will take us to the question number seven. Okay, so this question would be confidence Confidence interval, okay, for mu, when sigma is unknown. It's known, but S, sample, standard deviation, okay, sample 
standard deviation s is given okay, that's a standard so that was the case uh, this is where you are going to use the t test so your e would be tc s over radical so that's a difference of course it's going to be the case and n is less than less than 30 automatically when the s is given to you can't miss it this is this is s but basically if the sample size is a small but a very standard deviation is given to you you're going to call it s okay so that's a tc one is the one that you have to find so what's the situation in this problem it's about the number of the phone call that we get every okay every night or every evening so the sample information the sample data is the fact that n the sample size is 14 which is very much less than 30 14 phone calls uh, okay and average x bar is given the x bar is 5.2 and the sample the standard deviation is 1.9 and you want to find the confidence interval with the confidence level of 95 percent and the e is missing okay we did this one in test three again but i'm going to explain it this is problem seven on the practice test and number three okay but i explain this one so the point is i'm going to find the tc Okay, for the TC, you have to go to the T table. That's a part one of the T table. That's a T table. Okay, to find the TC, we have the N equal to the 14. So we have to find the DF, which is the 13. You see, we go to the table and the DF of 13. This is the DF of 13. Okay, that would be DF of 13. Again, something this one okay this is the df of 13 okay and the third line here you look for the 95 percent c and the 95 percent so that's the case df of 13 and the 95 percent 2160 2160 is going to be your tc okay TC is this number, 2.16. So make sure you know how to find it. Okay, so that's it because the rest are going to be just to substitute to get your to get your result. Okay, so this is it. N is equal to the 14. So I find the DF, which is equal to the 13. So we go on and we check here with the C equal to the 0.95. So this number is going to be your TC, 2.16. Okay, you go back, substitute for E, and you're done. So the E is going to be equal to 2.16. S is 1.9. Okay, divide by radical N, which is a radical, radical 40. And get uh, these numbers. Okay, uh, the result is going to be 1.1. 1 .1. So the E is 1.1. 1 .1. 1 .1. Okay, you find the, the interval for the mean is going to be X bar minus E. And the mu X bar plus E. And if you substitute the X bar was 5.2. 5.2 minus 1.1. 1 .1, and that's a mu. And that's going to be 5.2 plus 1.1. You know, it's a number of the phone call. So, you know, you simplify it and ground it. So the number is going to be 4.1. Uh, and the 6.3. So we call it between 4 and 6. So these are the number of the phone call that you get each evening. You have to make a comment. Okay, it's a 95% level. So again, there is a 95% chance 
at a population mean. Okay, population mean is going to be between four and six. Four and six calls, okay, the number of the calls that you're going to get each each evening. Okay, so that would be number number seven that you're going to have. And the second part for the, uh, okay, second part for finding the confidence interval for the mean, when the, the okay, when the sigma is missing. That's going to be the second type. Uh, this problem can have another type, so I'll give you that one too. Sometimes the, the actual numbers would be given to some data would be given, you get quite a lot in your book. You have an extra job, you drop them in your calculator quickly and you have to find the X bar and the S yourself. So that's the idea of the problem number, number eight. And that, uh, you know, the number eight, you have it on your, again, your, uh, This is about the substitution teachers, we did it before. So for this number, you just check the, the solution of the eight. Okay, let's see if there's gonna be the same thing here. Yes, for the solution of the eight, then check practice test number three. We did it before. Okay, number three, and that is going to be problem eight over there again. Okay, that would be problem, problem eight. Okay, so that would be, this the only extra job is that you have to find that uh, X bar, a standard deviation and the mean yourself to get, uh, to get through it. Okay, so that would end up the, the situation for the confidence interval for the, for the mean. Okay, so we get three problems so far. We have uh, two more to go for the confidence interval. So that would be our next uh, next topic. Okay, uh, the, the problems, we already done it. That would take us to the to the quiz four, but I do one of them for you. So that's a number nine, the next topic. The next topic is confidence interval. Okay, confidence interval. That's confidence interval for the population proportion. Population proportion. Just one case, easy case. Population proportion P. It's going to be Z case. Okay, and your E is going to be this one. E is equal to, you are going to have a ZC, the square root of P hat, Q hat divided by N. You should write it down correctly. Some of you missed it on the test. That P hat Q hat over N, all of them are inside that radical. All of them are inside the radical. And the P hat is going to be equal to the R over N. N is the number of the population. R is the portion of the population that you're going to be interested in. And the Q hat is going to be one minus P hat. Okay, you find uh, this number, and then your interval is going to be, the proportion is going to be between the P hat plus E, greater than P hat minus E. Okay, this is the one that we discussed in quiz four, and that's problem uh, one on the quiz four, but I do it because I want to explain it. So it's very easy to identify because three numbers would be given to. It's about, uh, we survey 300 union members in New York. We find out 112 favor a Republican governor. So the bigger number is N, 300, and the smaller number is R, or X, it doesn't matter, 112. So you want to find the confidence interval with the level of 98% the proportion of those people who favor a Republican candidate. Okay, so one, two, three numbers only. So you have to find your error for the proportion. 
Okay, your job is this one. You have to find the P hat, Q hat, and the TC to be able to do it. Okay, so you need the P hat. You need the Q hat. And you need the TZC to be able to do it. The P hat is easy. The P hat is R over N. R is 112 and then over 300. Okay, you simplify this one. And that would uh, give you, okay, that would give us point at the seven, we did this one. Then we find the Q hat, which is one minus point at the seven, and that make it to the point 63. Then we find the ZC for the C equal to the 98%. Which is 0.98, and you go to the bottom corner. Remember that the Z table that we have it. Okay, 98%. This is 98%, and the Z number is going to be 2.33. Okay, so the ZC is going to be 2.33. That's it. You go by substitute to get the E. So E is equal to uh, ZC of 2.33, the square root of P hat, 0.37, times that by Q hat, 0.63, divided by N, which is 300. Okay, use your calculator to get this number. This is the way I got it, 2.33. Inside the radical is going to be 0 0.028. And if you put them together, that gives you 0 0.065. So that would be your E. Okay, so we put it in the format, in the interval for the proportion. And it's a P hat minus E. We substitute and be done. So it's a 0.37. Minus the E, which is a point zero six five, and that's a point thirty seven plus point zero six five. And if you simplify it, so you got the point three zero five here, and you get a point four three five. You have to write down percent because it's a probability. So that would be 30.5%. And this would be 43.5%. That's it. So the chance that those uh, are going to be uh, favor a Republican or the, okay, there is a, there is a chance that between 30.5% and 43.5% of those population, they favor a Republican candidates. Okay, but make a comment that, for example, like, there is a 98% chance that the population proportion in favor of the Republican, that the population proportion is going to be between, okay, it's going to be between 30.5% and 43.5%, and then you're done. Okay, so it's a straightforward problem, and don't miss it. Uh, so that's a problem number, number nine, and you have another one to check, it's going to be number 10. So it's the same thing, you can check again, practice quiz number, practice quiz, the solution of already posted, number four, number four, and that's a problem two. The one that I did is problem one, and this is problem two. So problem one and two, problem of the proportion is going to be quiz four. Whatever we are going to do from now on 
is going to be on the on the quiz for those six questions going to be important. Let me check it uh, today you know, to, uh, before your final. I posted so you can compare to see if you miss on anything. And I'm going to miss it again. Okay, so that's the confidence interval for proportion. We need to do the standard deviation. We give you a break, 10 minutes. We come back. We do the okay standard deviation for the confidence interval for the standard deviation. And you know that the confidence interval is really easy. Five questions, five or six. So don't miss it. This is the way we're going to do it. So study this one, you'll be fine. Okay, 10 minutes, we come back. We have to do the test about this, five cases for that one. See you then.
Okay, so uh, we're done with the confidence interval for the proportion. We have a confidence interval for the standard deviation. I'm going to explain that one. For this new one, you need the chi-square table. Okay, find the chi-square to the right, to the left. So that was a question. So we did the nine and the 10. Okay, this is, uh, I do the confidence in the for the proportion first, then we go to the test hypothesis. So the one that's gonna be related to this part is uh, somewhere else. That is problem number, okay, 16 and number 17 related to this, this part. Okay, just make sure you get the, the correct one here. Yeah, that's gonna be 16 and uh, 17. I think that's one. Confidence interval. So that's gonna be our next, uh, next uh, topics. Okay. And the next topic is going to be <laughs> confidence interval. So you need to know what is a confidence interval. Confidence interval. Okay, confidence interval for the population, proportion, or the variance. Both of them are going to be the same. Okay, for the for population, population standard. Standard deviation. Okay, uh, population standard deviation. The formula is uh, this one. So it's uh, going to be sigma square for the variance is less than n minus one s squared divided by the chi s squared. This is the chi s squared. This is the right. You go with the left and it's going to be greater than or equal to the n minus one s squared. And that would be the chi s squared. This is left, we go with the right. So that's your formula. So your job is to find the chi s squared to the right and the left in the given problem. And then you substitute to get your, uh, to get your result. So uh, the one that we are going to talk about it again is from a quiz and number, uh, number four but I'm going to do it to explain it. Okay, this is a problem number number 16. You have already the solution of this one. Okay, <clears throat> so in problem number 16, uh, the situation is that we have a sample size of n equal to 27. Sample and, and the standard deviation of a sample is, is equal to the 4.6 years. Okay, 4.6. And uh, then we want to find the, the, the interval, uh, standard deviation, confidence interval, with the confidence level of 99%. You see, three numbers would be given to you. The sample size, a standard deviation, sample standard deviation, and the confidence confidence level, okay? This is question number four on the, okay, this is a question number, number four on your practice, practice quiz number four. So what we are going to do, we have to find the chi square to the right and the left. So this is the way we're going to do it. You have to show us how you did, do it. So we get the, we get the curve here. Okay, that's going to be the curve. So we identify the area of 99%. The chi s square give you the area to the right. So you have to find these two cut points. Okay, for the chi s square to the right and the left. So that's a 99%. The full area is 100%. So the left is going to be 1%. You divide it by two. So this would be 0.5%. And this would be also 0.5%. 0.5% would be like 0 
zero, five. So this portion over here corresponds to the chi square of point zero zero five. Then this area to the right, this is 99% and this is 5%. So the full area would be 99.5%. So this point over here is going to be the chi square of point nine Okay, 99.5, it's with 99.5. Okay, so this is the, the portion that you look for the chi square to the, okay, to the left, point 0.995 and point zero zero five. Now, in order to find it, you need the chi square table. You see, this is going to be the chi square table. You see, that would be the chi square table. And these are going to be the degree of freedoms. So in this case, n is equal to 27. So we go with the 20, 26. You see, this is going to be, this is going to be 26. So we pick the 26 here. And on the, on the top, on the top, when you move, you look for the 99.5% first. This is 0.995. So start with the 26, you see, you get the 26 and the 0.995, you read this number first, it's going to be 11.160. That's a chi square corresponds to the 0.995. Then you go to the get to the 0.005. This is 0.005. So we go right through the end and the number correspond to this part is going to be 48.29. Okay, so you need the chi square table and the theory of freedom. N equal to 27, so this is gonna be 26. Okay, we get the 26 and you pick these two numbers out, then we're done. Okay, so I'm going to get this one here for you. So that's N equal to, N equal to the 27. Okay, you get the degree of freedom, which is going to be 20, 26. And you move on and you check with this number first. Okay, so the number is going to be 11, is 11.16. Just keep going to get to the 0 0.005. And that number is going to be 48.29. Okay, so this is how we are going to identify, uh, identify the chi square to the right and the chi square to the, to the left. So uh, from this number that give you the chi square to the left. So the chi square to the left is 11.16. Okay, and the chi square to the right is going to be 48.20. Uh, sorry, chi square to the right is always the bigger number, 48.29. Okay, any question? So from the interval, N is uh, 27, so it's going to be 26. 27 minus one times S squared. S is 4.6, 4.6 squared, divided by the chi squared to the right, which is 48.29. Okay, so this is going to be less than, less than equal to the sigma squared. Less than, you repeat these numbers again, 27.1. 4.6 all squared and you divide it by 11.16 okay then use your calculator to get these numbers we did it uh, for that uh, <coughs> okay we did it for the for the quiz and this is uh, use the calculator or I have it and uh, numbers from the from the quiz that we did. This is <coughs> how we got it on that. That the quiz did have all the solutions. So bring yeah, that's the solution that we did. On the, on the quiz four. Okay, that's a practice quiz number four that we did. And 
that was question number 4a you see that's it you have already the solution that's a 4a that we did okay just repeat this one to finish it so the sigma is squared so the sigma is squared with the less than equal to the 49.3 and that would be greater than equal to the 11.4. You take the square root, the square root of 11.4. Okay, that gives you the sigma and the square root of 49.3. So the numbers are going to be 7.02, and that would be 3.38. Okay, so that would be the confidence interval for the standard deviation. You have to make a comment, it's a 99%. So there is, okay, there is a 99% chance that the standard deviation, the population standard deviation, the population standard deviation, standard deviation, is going to be between, okay, it's between 33.38 and 7.02. And then, uh, then do that. Okay, so this is uh, going to be number 16. It's 16A, we can check the 16B and, uh, in that uh, practice quiz that we have, okay? So the 4P, uh, just check it for yourself. The sample size n is equal to the 30, and the s is 2.5, and the confidence interval of 90%. So you already got the solution for this one in your. This is the solution from the practice quiz number number four. Okay, so check this one. Practice quiz. So I'll be able to do a little bit more. Number four. Okay. So that's going to be four B. So we give you one question on this one. It's a straightforward problem. And you can't miss it. Make sure that you are able to find the chi square to the right and to the left. Uh, okay. Just using this, this formula. So one question on the uh, confidence interval for the standard division. Okay, so we are done with the, all the confidence interval. As you see, we have four questions on this one. Now what next? Uh, similar one for the test hypothesis. Okay, and that would be again, a easy case that we're going to have. We do the test hypothesis for the mean and the standard deviation. And we already done all these problems. I'm going to check a couple of them for you. So the confidence interval uh, test hypothesis one is start from number number eleven. So the topics that we have is test hypothesis or hypothesis tests. Okay, for for mean or population population mean. Okay, there are uh, two different cases. The case that the sigma is known is like the confidence, uh, okay, like the confidence uh, interval. Or the case that the sigma is known and the case that the sigma is not known. So there are two different cases, two problems. Uh, in this one is the case that this is going to be case one, the sigma is uh, known. When the sigma is known, uh, uh, the only difference going to be where you use the test statistic. When the sigma is known, your test statistic, that's the important part. Okay, test a statistic must be Z test. Z0 is going to be, okay, so for this case, the form is going to be X bar minus mu over sigma over radical n. This is when the sigma is known. There's going to be two cases. The other one is the case that the sigma is not going to be unknown. Okay, so this is the problem on your quiz again, but I'm going to do it to explain it. Okay, number 11, number, this is number six on the practice quiz number four. Okay, so practice 
squeeze number four and the problem. Problem number six. But I'm going to explain it. You see, for this problem, you read it carefully to see there's going to be a claim at the end of the problem. So they want to know how tall are college hockey players. Uh, okay. So we pick a sample of 14 hockey players. So the sample information, sample data. We pick a sample of 14 uh, hockey players over here. Okay, we find out that their uh, mean height, X bar, is uh, going to be 69.1 inches. Okay, and the population standard deviation is given to you. It's a 0.9 inches. So what we'd like to do, we have to look the uh, significant level, significant level we identified with alpha. That's where you find out that you're dealing with the test hypothesis, the 5%, 5%, which is 0 0.05. And you want to check this claim. You see the claim is, you read it carefully. Uh, they ask this uh, question, does this indicate that the population mean is different from 68.3? So there is going to be a claim that you want to check. The claim is that uh, the population a mean is going to be different, okay, different from 68.3. So we read these problems carefully to identify what is the, what is going to be the claim in this problem. And you have a sample data. There are three cases, they may be different. It may be less than, or it may be greater than. We give you a couple of them, not all the three cases. In this case, it's going to be different. So this problem would have four steps that you have to identify all the steps for us. Step one is we start with the null hypothesis, okay? So the null hypothesis would be always equality. It's going to be mu equal to the specific number is given to us, which is 68.3. Then we have the alternative one, which is the H1. It's going to be that claim that we have. So the mu, not equal to the 68.3. This would end up with finding the probability of the area to the right, to the left, or two-sided, so it depends on this. This is not equal to say that this is a two-tailed area. Okay, it's going to be two-tailed two -tailed tests or two-tailed area. Okay, so that's the first step. The next step was the, the tool that we're going to use to get into the probability. And depends, sigma is given to you. So you mentioned that the sigma to the point nine is a given. And the Z test, Z test should be applied or must be applied or may be applied. Applied, just write it down right away. So means your formula is going to be Z naught equal to X bar minus, okay, X bar minus mu, mu naught, divided by the sigma over radical n. You substitute, the X bar of the sample is going to be 69.1. The mu naught is this, the number 68.3, divided by the sigma is given to is a 0.9, and the sample of 14 players. You see that give you, uh, that give you the one. And so you are going to simplify it to get these, uh, these numbers done. Again, you have the solution. This is the solution that we did before. Okay, I'll just repeat this one from that practice uh, quiz number, number four. So, and this is it. Uh, this would be 3.33. Okay, so the Z naught is equal to the 3.33. Okay, that's going to be the Z number. That's the second part. Okay, so we get the, the first part identifying the H naught and H1, the Z naught. Now the next part is probability. 
p-value. P-value, you have a two-tailed test. Two-tailed test. The two-tailed test is the fact that if you want to find the, the, the probability, your z is 3.33, and you pick this side as well, negative 3.33. So the probability or the p-value is this two portion. All of them are the same, so we pick only one of them. We go with this one because this is area to the left. It's easier to find. So the p is going to be equal to twice of the p of the z to be less than negative 3.33. Okay, you can either go with the right or you go to the left. It, it doesn't matter. So negative 3.33 from the table, it's a very small number. Okay, so this area from the Z table give you a point. It can be done also with calculator, 0, 0, 4. So the p-value is going to be 2 times 0 0.004, which is going to be 0 0.0008, which is very a small number. Okay, so that's going to be the probability. The last part's going to be comparison. The conclusion, your alpha is only, your alpha is 5%, which is 0 0.05. Now, if you compare them together, you see this is 0 0.05, this is 0, 0. So the P is going to be less than, P is less than alpha. When P is less than alpha, we reject the H naught. Reject, reject the H naught. Any question? So it's very standard operations. When you reject the H0 means you are in favor of H1. So you make a comment and then you connect it to the, okay, to supporting the claim or do not support the claim. So in this case, you reject the H0 means you like the other one. So you say, oh, there is evidence. Okay, there is sufficient as they ask in the question. There is sufficient evidence to believe, evidence to believe or to conclude. To conclude that to be otherwise, this means mu is not equal to the 68.3, because this is your H1. You see that's your H1. And that's exactly the claim. So we support the claim. Support. Okay, support the claim. So this is the way you are going to write it down if you want to get the full grade on this one. Okay, so it's, uh, you know, when you put them together, really it's just reading one reading from the table and then you'll be, you'll be fine. Okay, so this is a test hypothesis for the, for the mean when the sigma is known. Uh, okay, the, the tricky one is going to be when the, the sigma is not going to be known. Okay, so. Professor? Yes. How did you get the 0. 0.0004 on the top? Z table, you see. We go to the Z table. And oh, okay. What we have, you see, you have negative 333. Three. You see, you go to the Z, the negative part. So negative three three, you go with the negative three three first. Okay, that's a negative three three. You know that's going to be zero zero one two three. So that will be point zero zero four. Got it. Thank you. Okay, that's the one. So that was the case one for the test hypothesis when the mu is uh, is given to you. So we need another case when the sigma is not given. Okay. So in this is going to be, you have uh, two cases here. Uh, the number 12 is you have to find uh, these, uh, okay, you have to find the standard deviation and the mean together, but the actual one is the number 13. I do the 13, it's gonna be the second problem on the test hypothesis. In number 13, the problem is gonna be hypothesis test. Okay, case two, the hypothesis test. 
okay for uh, for mu for the mean when sigma is unknown okay sigma is unknown of course s would be given to in that case and you know sample size is a small and is less than 10. if this is going to be the case you see if the sigma is going to be unknown sigma is unknown so when you go to that test statistics that i talk about it you see your test stat is would be different what happens if uh, n is greater than 30. if n is greater than 30 you always go with the z test okay so whatever is given to you call it sigma in that case okay okay that's what so for the test statistic you must be careful that you are going to use this t so the t naught is going to be x bar minus mu okay over s over radical so you have to use this one and then of course the p value would be would be different okay so this is going to be a situation we're going to have in uh, number 13 we have a situation uh, okay about the national average municipal bonds and there is a claim that they want to check uh, you have a sample information of the following okay the sample data we pick a sample of uh, okay 16 and equal to the 16 okay and we find out for this group the average is 5.11 i drop the percent we just go with the numbers and the sample standard deviation you see sample standard deviation s is given to you is 1.15 okay you want to do a test okay with the significant level of the five percent alpha equal to the five percent and you want to check this claim that if this is going to be okay greater than the national average the national average is given to you so mu is going to be greater than national average is 4.19 you see this is going to be this is going to be the claim that you have are going to check okay as you can see uh, the situation is that uh, okay the situation is that uh, you don't have the uh, you don't have the population population standard deviation you have the sample and the sample size is very small so when you set up this test uh, you must make sure to use the t test not the z Okay, so that's a difference. Make sure don't miss it. So the, the first part of the argument is going to be the same thing. You know, the H naught is going to be mu equal to the given number, which is 4.19. So the H1 is going to be the claim that you want to check. It's less greater than 4.19. Since it's greater than is a right tail test because area to the right or one tail test, right? tailed test that would be useful when you want to find the p-value of course okay that's a step one a step two is a test a statistic so it's going to be test okay test a statistic and again a sigma is unknown sigma is unknown and the n is less than 30 otherwise you know whatever it is we call it sigma so t test must be applied t test should be applied if you use the z you know you are going to be out of the solution okay should be should be applied so we go with the t node this time which is going to be x bar minus mu over s over radical n so we drop the numbers <clears throat> for this group that the mean is 5.11 minus the mu the claim 4.19 over the s of 1.15 and the radical n which is radical 16. okay carefully this uh, get this number and that give it 3.2 
So the T naught is going to be 3.2. Okay. Now the fun part is I'm going to find the P value for this one. That's right, that one is different. Okay, we want to find the P value. For the P value, you have a right tail test. You see, right tailed test. So what we're going to do, you need the, the T table again. So you go to the T table. <coughs> Remember that's your T table. <coughs> we already used the T table to find the TC, but we use this fact. But there are two more things here. You see, this is a one tail area. And that's a two tail area. These two are going to be used for the test hypothesis. In this case, we have a right tail test. If the right tail is going to be just one tail. Left tail, one tail. That's going to be two-sided one. You have to use the second one. Now, how are going to use this one? We go with the DF first. N is equal to the 16. So the DF would be 15. So this is how we're going to do it. This is the DF of, what is the N? The N was 16, so the DF would be, DF would be 15. So we go with the DF of the 15, you see DF of the 15. DF of the 15, and in two tail area, alpha is 5%. You see, in, sorry, one tail area, because the right tail test. You identify the alpha of the 5% here. You see the alpha of the 5% is here. So this is alpha of the 5%. Okay, this is the column of the alpha of the 5%. And this is 15. You just mark this number, you see. It's not an important number, but you mark it down. You see, that's 1.753. If you go to the right, the number is going to be bigger than 1.7. If you go to the left, the number is going to be less than. You bring your T0. You see your T0, your T0 is 3.2. You see if you compare it together, 3.2 is bigger than 1.7. So this means your P value is going to be to the right here. So you go up, this is P. So if you go back to the alpha, where is the alpha? You see the alpha is here, 0.05. So your P number is going to be to the right of the 0 0.05. Read the first number, or any number, it doesn't matter. If you read the first number, it's going to be 0 0.025. You see, if you, even you think that your zero is going to be 0 0.025. Your alpha was 5%, 0 0.05. If you compare them together, you find out that the P is less than alpha. Okay, we don't need the actual number. We want just to estimate, to estimate it. Okay, so we identify the PF of the 15. You get this number. It's going to be something that you, you'll be able to compare. 1.753, uh, so it's an intersection of the 15 and the alpha in the one tail area. Then you compare your number, 3.2. So to get the 3.2, you have to go to the right. So your number is going to be, you know, your number is going to be something here. You see, so your p-value is going to be something on the top. You see, the number is going to be something like 0 0.005, which is much, much less than alpha. But if you read any number, that's going to be the same thing. Okay, just compare it with the first number. 0 0.02, 0 0.05. So p is less than. You see, pick another one, 0 0.01, 0 0.000. It doesn't matter. Just one of them would give you the result. Okay, so I'm going to explain it again over here. So this is what we did. So we start with the N, which is uh, 16. You see N is equal to the 16. You get the DF, which is equal to the 15. DF of the 15, you go on. You see it's going to be your alpha here. Your alpha is 5%, 0.05. But remember, you are in one tail area. If it's going to be right or left, it's a one tail. If it's not equal to, it's a two tail. So one tail area. 
then you read this number. You see, we check this number, and that was happened to be 1.753. But your T0, you compare it, T0 is 3.2. So it would pass this number, you see. If it's going to be less than you go to the left, it's a number line. So this means your P number is here. Your P number is, is here, to the right of the alpha. You read the first one, it doesn't matter. It's a 0 0.025. So the comparison is going to be the case that the P is less than alpha. You reject the astronaut. It's a very easy case. It can be done by calculator, but you have some difficulty to apply it. But this gives you the result right away. Okay, so P is less than alpha, you reject the H naught. When you reject the H naught means you like the other one. So there is, the conclusion is going to be there is sufficient evidence. You know, you support the other one. Sufficient evidence. Or basically you support the claim you accepted. There is sufficient evidence to conclude. Okay, to conclude that and they conclude that uh, the other one is correct. U is greater than 4.19. And you support the claim. Okay, support the, the claim. And then you're done. Any question? That's right, I have a question. Yes. So to be very clear here, we are comparing we're not comparing the P values from the table. We're comparing the values of alpha to determine if we uh, support the claim or not. Uh, in other words, uh, so we, we did, uh, no, we figured we out, uh, go ahead. Now, what we do, you see, you have the alpha here, okay? So you know, you know that the position of your P is going to be to the right of the alpha. Okay, mm -hmm. so you read any number in the one tail area to the right of the alpha. Okay, to, mm -hmm. to, because you have to compare P to the alpha. Okay, so any number, I pick just the first one. So I pick the first number, it's going to be 0 0.025. So 0 0.025 is the P, but alpha is 5%. So this means P is less than alpha. Right, I guess what I'm pointing out is that the R our P value is smaller than the T value that we calculated. Uh, so it, from that sense, um, uh, however, no, 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 in no, that no, sense, no, the no. alpha is getting smaller. No, 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 no. You see, this is nothing to do with that. You know, it can be behaving differently, depends on the alpha. You see, the T number mm -hmm. is, you see, the T, the, this number is not important really. So you have to check to see where the 3.2 is uh, located. You see, and, and 3.2 is greater than the number that means nothing, 1.753. Yeah. yeah. However, that's not what we're trying to determine. We're trying to determine the alpha P, value. That's it. Of P value. P value. P value, P value of of yeah. 3.2. Yes. Yes. All right. That's a bit confusing, but I think I understand. You see, we, with, this, with this method, we are not going to exactly find the P number. You see, we just estimating that number. Let me just okay. get back, back to this. You see, that number is not important. You see, look at this one. So the PF was just what? This is the PF, uh, the TF, the TF of 15. Look at this one. This is the TF. You see, this is going to be df of the 15, and your location of the alpha is here. So you want to know what's going to be the location of your p number. So what you have to do, you have to move move along this line to find out where is your t0. You see, where is your t0? You have to embed it into two different numbers here. You see, your number is 3.2, OK? Just go to the right, to the left. Where can you see approximately your number? 3.2, 3.2. Yeah, probably between the last two columns. That's right? it. So you are here. So your mm -hmm. P number is here. You see, you are here. Right. Which is, you see, 
So you are going so to be the alpha thin. is getting smaller. Uh, that's it. Yes. So, so it's a bit confusing now because you see the chart down here. If you're looking at the degrees of freedom mm -hmm. for 15, of course, those values are getting larger as we go to the right. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't, the, doesn't no, it doesn't, it's not nothing to do with each other. Okay. Because you just focus on P. You see, on the P. The one that we uh, pick at the T0 is to make these things easier. You see, the one that we start with the T0. So that gives us a direction that we're quickly going to the right to find it. I made or, the mistake and just sort of stopped there and said, oh, uh, this area is larger than that area. No, no, no. Because the difficulty is, you know, the table won't give you all the numbers, you see. Right. So that's why we guess. We pick this one. We say, oh, okay, so if it's going to be anything else, you see, if it's going to be anything else, it must be to the right of this number. So my P number must be to the right of the alpha over here, 0.05. So since the behavior of this number is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so if you pick any of these P number, you know, you get your result. You see, okay. that's it. That's going to be the case. Thanks for clarifying. Okay. okay. Any question? So, you know, that's it. But you must be careful, uh, the, the starting point. If it's going to be two-tailed area, you have to get the alpha from the second part. The situation would be different, you see. If you are going to be a two-tailed area, so your alpha is here. Okay, so the situation would be would be different. So be careful when we get these numbers. But it would be, you know, it would be bad. No, no, I don't have the. No, I cannot post the answer for you right away. This is the one that you have. All of them are giving you to us. Okay, that's going to be bad. Uh, okay. So you can watch this one again and again before before the next day. You already got the practice quiz number, okay, number four and the number number three, and I did the rest here. Okay, I study this one, and you you you'll be fine. Okay, so uh, this is the test hypothesis for the sigma. When it's known, uh, we should uh, get one more if we get time. We didn't talk about the, the last question that we did. Uh, what was the last one? Uh, we should give you one example on the, let's see if we can find it. A test hypothesis for the, for the variance. Remember the last one that we did? So let me see if I can, because I, I wanted to first step. Uh, usually cover something else. But uh, in this case, in your book, you know, the, the book that you're using, they, they, they didn't talk about these type of ideas. Uh, confidence interval, let's see if I have one here. Uh, we don't have, uh, because we need one example for the test hypothesis regarding that. Uh, okay, it must be somewhere there. You see the, the last topic that we did, just remind you what it is, because we give you one of them. Let me just uh, going back to the, our lecture notes. The, the last one. You see, this is uh, the, the mean. That's the one that we did. Okay, make sure to read, you know, read your lecture notes for, for this one. You see, that's a test hypothesis for the, the test hypothesis for the uh, standard deviation or the variance, okay? And uh, the test uh, statistics was different, okay? Because, you know, the the null hypothesis is going to be the same thing. And that was the, the test hypothesis is going to be the chi square one. Okay, and minus one is a square over sigma zero squared. And we get this one. And the, the to find the p-value is very similar to the t that we did over here. Okay, the tf, and then we compare them together. So we give you one problem on this one that I didn't get time enough to do it. There are a couple of more problems on that the review that we are not going to cover it and we didn't cover it because uh, 
So problem number 18 and the 19 is not going to be given to you. Uh, when I used to teach this course at Palomar, uh, the, the book was different. So I did <laughs> regression and correlation. But uh, since we go with that web assigned one, we end up with chapter eight. So 18 and 19 are not going to be given to you. Yes, any question? Um, can you explain uh, the part <laughs> under p-value for the two-tailed? where it says p equals p times x squared is not equal to chi. And you mean this one? For the chi squared, for the... Just right before you you look for the, the df and the alpha. For which test? This one or the previous one? Yeah, above, above right there. This one? Yeah. You, you see, for the case of the chi squared, uh, when it is always is the case when we have uh, the third case, the two-tailed one. So what we do, we just find one of them, then we multiply by two. Remember? And why would you use like the greater or or not not equal to sign? You see, the, you have two cases. You can use greater or you can use less than. Okay. But remember the the chi square give you the area to the right only. Does it matter if you use greater or less than because it's a two-tailed test? No. Okay. This one is easier. Okay. The other one is very complicated. All right. Because for the other one, you have to use the complement. Okay. Or the chi square. So for the chi square, we do the right one. It's much, much easier. For the Z, I know what you compare. For the Z, less than is easier. But for the chi square, you have to go with the area to the right. Because otherwise, it's you have to find the complement to get this one. It doesn't matter. If you can do it, you can do both of them. OK, thank you. But my suggestion is for the z less than, area to the left. Because the area to the left is easy to find for the z score. You multiply by 2. For the chi square, area to the right, because it's going to be just one number to get this one. You know, we, this is a little bit complicated, not com confusing. So we are not going to do a two-tail area for the last question. Okay. We just give you one with the right tail test, you see, greater than like this one. You see, this is the one that's going to be, you just focus on this case only. Okay, for the chi square, it's going to be something that's going to be greater than, so your test is going to be right tail test. Okay, right tail test, you find your chi squared. For the p-value, it's going to be right tail, it's going to be easy one. You find the TF25, 24, like the T that we did. Okay, uh, so we are not going to do a two-tailed one. All right. It's a little bit more involved. And, uh, and that's it. Any question? So I studied the topics that I discussed today, really. Uh, that's it and you'll be fine. So I give you one question from each of these topics that I discuss, and you have it on your uh, quiz four is very important. Okay, practice quiz four. Yes, I did all of them almost. So if you want to get more practice, go in with the other one. Or you can get this one as a sample and just uh, go over the one that I did today and you should be fine for the, for the test. Uh, because it takes time. I know that this uh, test is not going to be not going to be difficult, but it takes time. So make sure that your formulas are ready. So for each problem, you need a set of formulas. I've already told you that you can bring any formula you like. So you have uh, something like 13 topics that I've covered, discovered today. So you have to need 13 sets of formulas. So make your formulas ready. Box plot that Okay, normal distribution that. So your formula is ready. So the important part is to model those problems in those formulas and the table. If you want to use calculator, you are welcome to do it. But explain the procedure, okay? Design it, use symbolic, okay, terms to identify. Don't just use a couple of numbers. I accept it. Okay, that's fine. But I know that it takes time. So read the samples that I gave you. You don't need to go anywhere else. The one that I discussed today, make sure you have 12 or 13 sets of formulas. Design it 
and your job is to read the problem carefully and for all of them get the sample data substitute get the result it's done okay any question and don't be late you need exactly more than two hours to do it so i give you two and a half hours okay that's one so i start at nearly at 10 a little bit you know i'll be on time and you'll be able to do it right away okay so i look at your uh, your test i will drop your lowest test and the lowest squeeze and before the final you have a look and i have a look at a general look at the what you did on the on the assignment i'll be generous on that one we are not going to be picky about you know how many you did or you did not but we just check to see that you spent a fair enough time to do your assignment then i give you your points before before the final is a okay. quiz for you already graded oh i tried very hard and no i'll do it uh, maybe i do it by tomorrow okay for you because i have already five finals yeah but i'm done all right uh, thank you professor okay so uh, let me know by email if you have any question then i'm happy to answer it okay that's one so good luck and again read the final review the one that i did today just uh, the one that i refer to it get it from the practice test practice quiz just go back and check it we repair those 12 sets of formulas design and you'll be fine really most of the people get excellent grade on this one the time is the only difficulty for this test otherwise you'll be fine okay good luck and see you on uh, okay on thursday uh, don't be late okay have a good one bye i'll post this lecture as soon as it's available all right, thank you, Professor. Okay, have a good one. Bye-bye.